Okay, it's day 125, and this is going to be a media critique. This news conference was Friday about the Russian meddling. That's when the indictment came out. None of the real facts of the indictment still have made the media five days later. I finally saw CNN last night with Task Force. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, most people have this concept, that it's some building, that there was all these trolls in. There was 13 trolls. They bought a whole bunch of $3 ads. They spent $54 in... Wisconsin 311 in Michigan and about 170 in Ohio and Pennsylvania and they were dumb because they didn't know what a purple state was until they came to the United States that's most people's understanding what really happened was four people tried to get in the United States three people did come in there was one ringleader and two people that were kind of more satellites they threatened a toxic plume in Louisiana they threatened an Ebola scare in Atlanta and they also threatened a civil unrest through uh, a racially charged un uh, unarmed woman being shot by a police officer. This was the terrorism. This was the terrorism. Now it's in the indictment, but for some reason, uh, alternative media, the web media, YouTube, mainstream media, no one has covered that. Um, I give ourselves high marks here. Uh, our understanding of this is far superior. And this, it, when I haven't heard one person in, in any of those media forums mention these things, and this is critical to understanding. Okay, moving on to the drugs. So, I think the chronology here is important because I start in Detroit with the pain clinics and then move to across the river into Canada. We talk about pain clinics there. I'm with a Canadian filmmaker, and she's been had this close relationship almost inside this tribe of PAC ISI, these international criminals. They're living the high life, this kind of an Ibrahim lifestyle. They're flying on all these jets first class. They're having all these fancy parties. They're going all to these top events. They've got all this weapon culture. And it's sort of like, you know, Married to the Mob was the story of the Canadian filmmaker, uh, but never quite knowing what the, what the illegal, illegality was, you know, just always trying to put the finger, like, how is this all happening? Why are we flying to UAE and, and Pakistan and all these different places? On, uh, and, and how could these people be on these international Interpol crime lists and yet get passports and citizenship in the United States through through film uh, loopholes and so forth? And it really hit home. You know, I had, I had some understanding of the CIA and their you know development of different drugs and so forth, uh, but I, I didn't have the up close personal. Um, you know, uh, talking to people who had actually experienced this and and the whole drug business. One thing I, I didn't mention is I met this young Israeli gal. She was maybe uh, 27, a real uh, pretty blonde gal that met me. And she, I had done a film earlier in the morning, and she recognized the restaurant. She came out to meet me. And I thought, is this, you know, is this BB helping me? I don't know. But anyway, um, she had said, yeah, everything that you had kind of been talking about, and Deep Uranium had said, hey, it's it's animal products, animal pharma that's being repilled. It's, it's legitimate bottles of legitimate drugs in cheap bottles being un thrown out and then having the drugs put in different bottles for legitimate manufacturers. It's all this stuff. Everything you would think of. Uh, animal pharma being crushed and put in these repilling machines <clears throat> and so forth. So she confirmed all that, but then she also was an investigator looking into these murders at these mosques. And it was being uh, assigned to like, you know, crazy white supremacist sort of thing. She said, no, no, that's actually not what it is at all. It's these Hell's Angels that kind of uh, run roughshod over all these families. These families, these immigrant families have come in and they're trying to get their kids an education. And the wife does the pilling and the guy drives the, you know, the, the limo uh, during the day to try to make ends meet. And if they ever mess up, they get killed. And there had been a killing at a mosque up in Quebec City where four people had been killed and she was doing quite a bit of research work on that. So it'd be interesting to hear a comment from her if she still watches the channel, that'd be interesting. But those are the types of things that really deepen your understanding, sort of like this situation where you really understand what's going on by actually going there versus just having this very superficial idea of, oh, well, Russian meddling. You know, now we need to sanction a whole bunch of uh, Russians and we need to uh, maybe go to war and kill a bunch of Russians. Well, you shouldn't make those decisions with such superficial knowledge when actually this is what happened right here. And you should actually target the sanctions toward the people that actually commit the crimes, not smear a whole country uh, uh, willy-nilly. So going to, uh, to uh, Yale was interesting because it was almost like seeing 
the drug business at you know skull and bones and all that it had been put into kind of uh, ritual, you know, almost like this Masonic ritual and this SES, it reminded me so much of this SES, which is we're going to take all these good people, we're going to line them all up and get them to do what we want, and we're going to put them down in this 313, this evil bucket, this half evil bucket. We're going to have this kind of, you know, you're now kind of like the arbiter of what's good and bad, and you decide who lives and who dies and so forth. And uh, that's definitely the feeling I got at Yale. There was definitely a haughtiness and, uh, of the elites. That no, I love Yale as well. There's a lot of fantastic things about Yale, but I did have there is this kind of thread, this evil thread running through there, thinking, hey, we are the ones who decide who lives and who dies. We we're, we're the one who who manages this funnel, and we decide who lives or dies. And this is a this is the, I believe the essence of the deep state, getting to this and breaking this up, this SES, this, these 8,000 different people that Hillary has put in there. And a lot of them had come from Canada. They'd spent time in NATO and so forth as executives in uh, the Canadian uh, uh, government, and then they were being brought in above all these career, diplom uh, career people in the United States, these SES. So I thought of Victoria Newland for some reason as the face of SES for me. There's probably others. Um, so, then, coming into Long Island, and again, getting a much deeper understanding of somebody who's, who's like right there, involved, knows the, some of the people, knows actually how this works with the police, and how the police actually are involved in sort of the recruiting and pimping of these girls, and then how these girls are being kept in these houses for weeks, then murdered, when they're finally, uh, or when they finally suicide. That there's these houses, safe houses of five, six, seven guys, kind of like a fraternity house, and these are these girls are kept like a den sister as a reward at the end of the day for the you know running your drug routes. It it just really gave me a much deeper understanding of of the drug business, and I just didn't have that in, at that time. So I'll finish off here finally with the drill drill down on this story, which is the uh, Vander uh, Zwan story. Again, CNN. You know, a lawyer involved with Paul Manafort, millions of dollars going from Ukraine to the United States, money laundering. Um, boy, Trump's going to get it now. Nothing could be further from the truth. The, these are the three guys. This poor kid here, you could just tell he was this, this kid trying to be a, a go-between. He's kind of this uh, polo club kid that had been raised in uh, London, uh, you know, MI6 agent kind of thing. And just kind of an international bon vivant. Now he's like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I didn't realize that, you know, uh, Weissman was going to stab me in the back and McCabe was going to stab me in the back. It's really Friedman, Aben, and Khan, Mr. Biscuit 1, Biscuit 2, and then Khan that were, you know, looting this Ukrainian treasury, right? And finally, I, I did hear the name German Khan on CNN last night. I was with Task Force. I almost fell off my chair. I was like, oh my God, they actually said the name German Khan and looked deeper than just this lawyer being, you know, uh, uh, just yet another domino in the indictments. So that was kind of the story last night, and and I was I was shocked to see that actually somebody actually mentioned German Khan. Um, this is where the story is going. The the Manafort Podesta transfers and how all that money laundering happened through the Cayman Islands and through Cyprus and the and the Guber, Uh is is the whole story. It's all developing in front of our eyes as they are throwing stones over here trying to get Trump. They keep revealing more of the actual inner workings of the Podesta Manafort money funnel and uh, the money laundering funnel and it's it's becoming a very interesting to see actually how that whole thing worked. Sort of in the similar way of getting an education on how the drug business worked here or getting an education on, on uh, how actually the indictment uh, was selected, uh, selectively covered for only a piece of what actually happened. And I guess the final on all this is this form here with this open source journalism is deeper understanding. It's, it's, there's feedback, it's interactive, and it's better. And this is how decisions are, are made. With more information, uh, more understanding of true information, you make better decisions. When you're talking about impeaching the President of the United States, you don't want to have a cursory, incorrect, superficial understandings of anything. If you're going after the drug business, you don't want to go after the cashiers. You want to go after the people with the encrypted Blackberries that are the, 
Hell's Angels that are running the show. That's how it's done. If you want to get rid of the strain, the swamp in Washington, you can't just fire one or two people. You have to take out this SES. You have to say, hey, everybody gone. We're eliminating SES. Uh, you know, I'd say eliminate at least 6,000 of the 8,000 positions. Gone. We're going to retire you. We don't need them anymore. We're going to go to people who have been at least in, the, in their industry to be an executive at the department at least five years in your department. Or, or 10, I think, is even better. Why would you want someone running a department that doesn't know anything about it? Somebody from over in Homeland Security is now coming into BLM and managing BLM. What are they going to do? They're going to put guns everywhere. They're going to put bulletproof vests everywhere. They're going to buy tanks. And they're going to start taking land from farmers and ranchers. That's what they did. That's what happened. That's why the people who are in these IRS and different, uh, different departments should be run by people who came up through the ranks and know the business and have the respect of the people that work there.